Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gold Lotus Popper. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial video so how to play the Popper deck Combotron or better known as Altertron. So we're not going to go over the full deck review. I'll do that in another video. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over the main line of play so that way you know what you need to look for when you're going to set up this, this combo. So I'm going to post a full deck list here and I'm also going to put the link to it in the description below. But this is the deck that Medio Mazzola played at Poppergeddon 1. So if uh, you're looking for the exact deck list and review, you can look that up. Um, so the deck revolves around a particular combo revolving around Mirror Retriever, Ashnod's Altar, and Golem Foundry. So with these three cards, you're going to basically get two Mirror Retrievers, one in your hand and one in the graveyard. Doesn't matter how. And you're going to have also Ashnod's Altar on the field with Golem Foundry. So basically what Golem Foundry says is whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may put a charge counter on Golem Foundry. Remove three charge counters from Golem Foundry. Put a 3-3 colorless Golem artifact creature token onto the battlefield. So with Ashnod's Altar and Golem Foundry on the field, it says sacrifice creature, add two colorless. Well, Mirror Retriever costs two colorless. And that says, whenever Mirror Retriever dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So, you can see where this is going. With the three or the three cards and one in the graveyard, whenever you sacrifice a Mirror Retriever to Ashnod's Altar, you're going to get another Mirror Retriever back from the graveyard. And you're going to generate two colorless mana. Then when you cast that, next, that new Mirror Retriever, you're going to put a counter on Golem Foundry. Then you're going to sack it and get the other Mirror Retriever back. And you're going to continuously sack and add the mirror retrievers back, creating uh, basically a loop where you're gonna be putting pseudo infinite counters on Golem Foundry. And then at any point, you can start cashing out these um, counters to create three, three Golems artifact creature tokens. Well, you also play three Weather of the Storm in this deck, so you can also at any point cash in a Weather of the Storm after you count your Storm count and generate pseudo infinite life. Um, same with when you get to the sideboard, you have a Fangren Marauder in there that says whenever an artifact is put in your graveyard from the battlefield, you gain, you may gain five life. So with Fangren Marauder on the field, you're going to gain five life every single time you sacrifice a Mirror Retriever. And that's like basically infinite life in, in itself is too. Wherever you stop, you have to give a numerical order. But at that point, you're going to be getting so much life, it's going to be basically impossible for them to come back unless they have some kind of infinite damage which is like maybe defender combo is like the only infinite damage i can think of other than if you're playing a um combo deck like uh maybe i don't know weird gun combo or uh mogwarts combo or uh i don't even know the mirror match i don't know otherwise you're gonna just basically gain infinite life and they're not gonna be able to kill you through damage but yeah, so you have a couple other cards in this deck that are going to help you out a lot. Um, Expedition maps and Ancient Stirrings help you find what you need. The maps are going to help you find your Tron lands. The Ancient Stirrings are going to help you dig for pr practically anything in the deck except for Ancient Stirrings, Deadly Dispute, and Weather Storm because those are colored. But any of your artifacts, creatures, lands, whatever, that helps you. Um, you have a bunch of artifacts that help you generate colored mana filter out the colored mana or colorless mana you have chromatic spheres chromatic stars energy refractors those all filter for colored mana um, also draw you cards acre wellspring draws you more cards and then you just have your standard tron package with a couple other kind of utility lands and then your sideboard is set up to where you can kind of deal with a lot of different meta matchups um, some are harder than others uh Decks that have access to white have dust to dust, which can be a huge problem for you. Um, uh, they can get rid of your combo pieces. Um, that's why you have stuff like Deadly Spute in your uh, deck, because that way you can actually sacrifice the artifacts in response to them dust to dusting your cards. And you can uh, benefit or get somewhat value out of them, even though they are going to be destroyed. Uh, the only one other thing in this deck that uh, might need some explain is, is the three Mirror Kinsmiths that are new additions. They came from the Phyrexia All Will Be One set, and they are basically a tutor for your Mirror Retrievers. Because, like I said, Mirror Retrievers are insanely important to get 
at least two in your hand so you can get things started. But the Mirror Kinsmiths say, whenever Mirror Kinsmiths enter the battlefield, you may search your library for a Mirror card revealed, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So you get this on the field, and you get one of your Mirror Retrievers, and then you can sacrifice it to Ashnod's Altar and cast your first Mirror Retriever. And then if you already have another one, you can basically start the loop. Um, other than that, the, uh, the deck runs like a well-oiled machine. Uh, basically, if you get the combo online it's hard to really interrupt with so many ways of sacrificing artifacts and kind of interrupting their plays the one thing i will say about this deck is that it is very vulnerable to disruption when it comes to setting up the the combo so what you want to do is you want to have basically everything in your hand and try and get as much out on the same turn as possible um, I would suggest getting Golem Foundry out first, since it says whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may put a charge counter on Golem Foundry. So if you get that out uh, very early on and you start spamming a bunch of other cheap artifacts on the field, you can create some golems without even getting the combo going. Uh, it only takes three artif or three artifacts being cast basically to get a golem. So, and a three three is a pretty decently sized creature in this format. So if you can get the Golem Foundry down early, uh, I would do that. And Golem Foundries do stack, so if for some strange reason you're just drawing a bunch of them, um, I would play one, hold one, but if not, well, that then that's up to you. But like I said, try and get a Golem Foundry down early, and then get the Mirror Retrievers and the Altar in hand, and then cast everything on the same turn. Don't try and piece it together where you cast one part, then another part, and then another part, because that gives your opponent more chances to disrupt it or destroy or exile. And if they start exiling like the altars and the foundries, that's a problem, because um, if you put those down first and then you play a mirror retriever, then they try and exile the retriever, you can always, in response, either sacrifice it or deadly dispute it or something. So, uh, well, that's it for today. So it was just a quick uh, deck tutorial for those who haven't ever ran the deck or were just more curious about it. I might go into the deck a little bit deeper into another video, but uh, as for now, I'll leave the links below to the uh, Matteo Mazzola deck that won the Popper Geddon, which is a huge tournament over in Europe. Um, a lot of players like Thoroff and Andre Mangucci play in it, and there was a great turnout. I think there was over 400 players at this event, um, but yeah, so uh, full dis uh, deck description in the comments or uh, description below, and uh, other than that, I'll see you guys around.